ADO 34 was the car for the 70s that the midget should have been. It was based on a mini platform with lots of common components, cheaper fine production for Rover Group or then at the time BMC. Unfortunately the government didn't think it was the way to go and instructed the company as it was owned by the government at the time to run production down. At the same time all the other cars in the range was becoming too old to take any further development. The MGB itself was being closed in 1980, and in the late 70s, Austin Rover, Rover Group, whatever it was called at the time, was charged with coming up with ADO 21. This was going to be the replacement for the MGB. The brief being hydrogas suspension, rack and pinion steering, mid mounted aluminium rear engine, to bring it all up into line for the 20th century. Now, for people thinking the car was failed, guess again. 15 years later, the MGF. The brief was exactly the same as ADO 21. Independent all-round hydrogas suspension, mid-mounted all-alloy aluminium engine, and everything ADO 21 should have been. Here we see this is my MGF. Um, and it's probably to anybody who's ever driven one will tell you this is the best handling car ever to come out of BMC. Had ADO 21 at the time used the technology which was available, which this car has, the F4 hydrogas suspension, the alloy Casey's engine, which was developed from the Triumph Dolomite sprint engine at Gaiden. Um, so it's a direct descendant from the Triumph Dolomite engine in the back of this car. I'm getting ahead of myself though, we're going to go back now to the A35 which Donald Healy saw the potential in as a small sporty car, taking away the body, adding lightness and improving performance very much in the Colin Chapman idea, ideology, Austin uh, Healy um, brought out the beautiful midget and the bug-eyed sprite or frog-eyed sprite which I would say of the Atlantic Pond you were from. As we can see here, it actually it was a gorgeous little car. It was a fast car. Anybody who watched Goodwood Festival of Speed will see how amazing this little car handles. It was the forerunner of the Mini. See, do you see where we're going? So the Midget went into production with the um, the Sprites producing the Spridgets, which stayed in production through the six through the late sixties, seventies, and came drawn to a close in the late seventies as parts was drying up. The engine would no longer, AC's engine would no longer meet American emissions, so the Triumph 1500 engine was used. It was becoming increasingly harder to get this old girl through each category of safety tests each year. Different back ends were ended, round arches, squared arches, some had um, creases in the rear hangers, etc. from poor wells. So it was all work to be done in the car. So during the late 60s, the LMC looked to their stock to see what they could do. And that's when the attention turned to the Mini Cooper. It was one of the best little cars and it was out selling everything in Britain at the time and also proved itself on the rally scene. So MG decided to see what they could do to bring a midget more up to date and step away from the rear wheel drive old design of the car after all. The Mini had proven itself in rallying to be the way forward. The car chosen was the basic Mini. It could be used in van form or car form. It gave it the, the longer wheelbase which it needed from the, the Mini van. And this is what was eventually taken for ADO 34. The longer wheelbase gave more boot space. So it gave you your, your extra seating capacity. More storage in the rear to stow your, to stow your rear hood. Here you can see the mini traits on the wheels, but retaining the traditional MGB front end. It was a gorgeous little car. It handled well, it performed really well, and BMC was too scared to, to launch it in the fear it might take sales away from the mini. However, they shouldn't have feared as it was in a different, totally different area market to a different clientele. 
The new engine that was later in life called the K-Series was originally developed at the Gaydon Works with the help of Tickford of later Aston Martin fame. The engine had a perfect airfare in excess of 20 to 1, meaning that you were saving at least 40% per gallon of fuel on a journey. It was designed specific for the Mini to replace the aging A-Series engine which had been pushed into service for the best part of 45 years. It was something that needed fixing urgent. It was a fantastic engine, but the government stopped it and pulled the plug. The years had now rolled over into the 70s, and the MG Midget and the B GT were now long in the tooth. They'd been around for the best part of 20 years. Suspensions had been risen, emissions stifled for the US market, humongous rubber bumpers fitted, and they were still no closer to getting a car out of the starting blocks. Once again, BMC returned to the Mini and his venerable engine, the A-Series, which had been brought out in the 1950s, with his original design going right back to the 1940s. The engine was out of date, it was no longer meet modern standards. But as no surprise would come, BMC found life in the old dog yet. The engine would see itself forced into further use. In some cases, the engine would be force charged, turbocharged, twin carburetors. The engine was extracting over 130 horsepower in race guys in the 1980s MG Metro Cup. The next development to come along was the MG EX234, not to be confused with the EXE. This was the true MGE replacement of the, the B, C, D, E, and eventually would become the F. As you can see here, from the other uh, pictures, it was designed to replace both the midget and the B, falling between the two. For those who wanted the open top roaster experience, there would be one version, and those who wanted the hard top, there would be the secondary version. But Rover hadn't finished, or BLMC hadn't finished destroying um, the A-Series engine, and went to go on one step further with the next prototype shown here, AD 070. It looks something like a, a square box. What next occurred was the government getting involved with the design. The likes of Harris Mann being forced into doing things such as the insane wedge shapes of the Ambassador Princess, TR7s, etc. The square edgy lines was now the thing. The smooth flowing lines of the MGB was gone. And what we found ourselves with now was a, um, what is today called a modern Eurobox. A three box design, a bonnet, a boot, and the living box in the centre, the accommodation. It was square, it was angular, and it was not gonna sell. 1980 had arrived along with the birth of the Mini Metro. It was the evolution of the original Mini, using the A Plus engine and all the original underpinnings from the original designs and the Alex Isagonis hydrogas suspension system. The Mark I Mark II soon developed into MG versions with the Mark I being given to Williams Grand Prix Engineering and developing the A-Spec 6R4 Metro, four-wheel drive, rear engine and a V6 engine. This was further developed into the long wheelbase 6R4 Group B rally car, producing over 450 horsepower in Clubman spec, 250 to off-the-shelf to customers, with the later rallycross versions as pioneered by Will Gobb going over to produce over 850 horsepower from the venerable Rover V8 engine now reduced to six cylinders from its original General Motors starting point. What rolled out of the showrooms was an absolute animal. The B-Spec 6R4 was capable of 0-60 in under two and a half seconds on a gravel road. It was a fire-breathing monster. I've actually been with one of these back in the 80s in full flight. Your whole insides just jiggle from the power of the engine as it goes past. There is nothing like it. When you see a 6R4 in full beast mode, I'm going for it. There is not another car like it on this planet will match the intensity of the 6R4. Those who have driven them will tell you it is an absolute handful to drive. Only the most experienced drivers can drive it. And considering this was from a company that up to only five years earlier was looking at modifying a little mini 
to a 1300 engine for cruising on country lanes and the odd little twist and turn. But what they actually gave us in the end was the most insane rally car to ever roll out of Britain. If you were to think Rover had finished their guess again, this would go on to become the MG EXE. I'll show you the picture next. It was the complete back end of a 6R4 cut off and put into the most stunning coupe body to ever grace any motor stand during the late 1980s, early 90s. The car should have gone production. It never did. Or did it? Because later on, it would be developed into the Jaguar XJ220. The entire powertrain, again in back end from the 6R4 Metro, became one of the world's fastest supercars at the time. All developing from the original Mini. Through different engineers, different designers, the car had evolved so much it was no longer the Mini that it was what it was. It was now the world's fastest supercar. So much for the MGB Roadster. But here we take a fork in the road. While the supercars went off to the left, Rover quietly continued with the Mark III and the Mark IV Metro. Bring out the Metro GTI and of course the stillborn MG Midget. This beautiful little car was to be the next generation midget to go alongside the 6R4. Same as in the old days you had the midget to go alongside the bigger supercars of the time like the MGC, the MGR V8 or MGB GT V8. It was to be the little family car which they've been crying out for for decades. But once again, Mr. Government, because Rover Austin was still in the government control at the time, put a stop to this pretty little car, which again would have put extra coffers into the funds for Rover. The next step then was to develop the 6R4 using the designs from the MG EXE into what we all know today as the MGF. Quite amazing really when you consider all this started from the original BMC Mini designed by Alex Izagonis and his need for a sporty, fun, family little car. So the original design of the Mini gave birth to around about seven supercars, every one of which still contains history of the original Mini. The 6R4U still contains parts of the floor pan and shell of the Metro. The Metro floor pans was taken from the Mini to mount the A-plus series engine, etc. All the cars have DNA from each one of their siblings. Well, thank you for watching this, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and this lovely little history into some of the stillborn cars from MG. Keep watching. Thanks and bye-bye.